Rebecca Haggerty, Associate Professor of Professional Practice at the Annenberg School. I'm here to present the award for local pandemic coverage to Milwaukee, Wisconsin's TMJ4. Wisconsin's pandemic shutdown brought its dangerously outdated unemployment system to the breaking point, failing thousands of people, some of whom became homeless while waiting for benefits. The Scripps-owned NBC affiliate used social and broadcast media for struggling Wisconsinites to tell their own stories, and the station and its nonprofit partner, Wisconsin Watch, to hold government's feet to the fire, helping citizens collect hundreds of thousands of dollars in unemployment back pay. The jury commended the TMJ4I team's great storytelling and selfless tenacity as a great example of journalism as a public service. Let's take a look. They said everything would probably go through. Harry Sir's job at a public pool in Cedarburg ended in June. It just says that it's being processed. It wasn't until September <laughs> that someone answered her calls. They told her there was a mistake on her claim, but now it's fixed. They just have to process it. Processing takes less than two weeks. Normally, it has now been eight weeks since that message has been posted. While she fought to get any answers from the state, Sir found out the ovarian cancer she successfully beat two years ago returned. So as you're battling cancer, you are trying to get your money from the DWD. That's been the difficult part because I had to borrow money from family just to pay my own health insurance to make sure that I was covered for all these cancer treatments. Sir is not alone. Everybody just tells me it's been assigned. Uh, it's, it's been assigned to somebody. They're looking at it. I've called more than 80 times. We're presently on um, uh, food stamps. <laughs> When the order to stay at home came in March, hundreds of thousands of people in Wisconsin lost their jobs, many for the first time. From March 15th to June 30th, more than 781,000 Wisconsinites applied for unemployment. That's more than 11 times the number that filed in that stretch in 2019. The unemployment system began to crumble as the pandemic worsened. Emails obtained by Wisconsin Watch through an open records request show the urgency and concern within the DWD. The day after the governor's safer at home order went into effect, DWD spokesperson Ben Jed wrote, quote, we are getting more and more questions and negative comments on Facebook and Twitter. Later that day, then Secretary Caleb Frostman wrote, quote, we are getting inundated with press inquiries about the long wait times and we can only keep the negative press at bay for so long. He added, quote, we have to find a way to get more answers to more people. Accepting for TMJ4 is reporter Kristen Byrne, photojournalist Tamat Wilburton, and producer Marty Hobie. We want to thank the Norman Lear Center, USC Annenberg, uh, the Cronkite judges, our parent company EW Scripps, the leadership and staff at our station TMJ4 News, and most importantly, the viewers who trusted us to tell their stories. You may be wondering, why are we in this day room? Well, we're here because eight months ago, Tamat, Marty, and myself, we connected virtually with dozens of Wisconsinites struggling to get their unemployment benefits. They were at the end of their rope and they trusted us to tell their stories. We started and were committed to telling unemployment problems and problems they were having with, with unemployment at the start of the pandemic. And several months in, we were able to help a couple people get thousands of dollars of their benefit money. And in that story, we asked others, hey, if you're struggling, email us, we wanna help. The emails came in and they haven't stopped. So as a photojournalist, um, this was kind of a tricky story to um, tell. We're in a pandemic and everything went virtual. So this was the first time in all of our careers that we had to figure out a way to connect with um, individuals all over the state of Wisconsin. So they trusted us um, to tell their stories as to what their struggles were because we physically couldn't go into their um, into their homes. So we had to do it over the over the computer, mm -hmm. which was a challenge at times because the signal would drop, um, audio wouldn't be there, there were delays, but people still they came back. They didn't quit. They came back because they wanted to share their story with us, and. Um, we made it happen, you know, and I think it made us all aware that this could happen to anybody. And that's what kind of made it hit home when we looked at the at the faces out there. And we called it faces of uh, unemployment because that's what it looked like, you know. So we thank everybody for sharing, you know, their stories with us. 
Yeah, we also want to thank, uh, we partnered with the Wisconsin Center for Investigative Journalism on this project. Uh, if you can believe, this actually started as uh, a project looking into overtime hours at the department, and it just kind of exploded into uh, the uh, year-long um, research and investigative project it became. So specifically, Jim Malowitz, Bram Sablesmith for their help, their reporting and editing. Uh, and just the collaboration really showed that long-form journalism is still very much needed uh, in today's society and is still possible in uh, the days of tight and daily deadlines. So again, we want to thank uh, the Norman Lear Center, USC Annenberg, and the judges again for uh, this wonderful honor. This is certainly we're all going to cherish uh, for the rest of our careers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. I spoke with TMJ4's Kristen Byrne and Marty Hobie about the station's efforts to hold the state of Wisconsin accountable. You can watch the full conversation at cronkiteawards.org. Here's a clip. It started just on doing one or two stories with a couple of people and, and helping them get their benefit money. Um, and one story in particular we aired months into the pandemic we were able to get thousands of dollars for two Wisconsinites who were unemployed and deservedly needed their benefit money. Once we did that story, we asked others to email us if they had been waiting months as well. And boy, those emails came in and, and we still get them to this day. Even yesterday, we, we got a few with people needing help. And I think too, just like everyone else, our newsroom and our investigative unit was transitioning from uh, into a pandemic workflow. Uh, and uh, the, our assignment desk will tell you they've never received more calls about a single topic in their professional careers and that people reaching out to the station on social media, calling in, emailing mm -hmm. us, emailing anyone, in including our front desk and sales staff at times, yep. uh, of just looking for help. So it was, we through this, we were able to kind of uh, create a database of people we've, we who reached out to us, people we reached out to, if we sent their information to the state and if we were successful in, in helping them um, uh, access their benefits. And as we were doing this, we were also trying to learn about this system. This was something neither of us really covered extensively before. So it was becoming familiar with the subject matter and uh, becoming experts in it uh, virtually in a matter of weeks. Wow. Um, and can you, uh talk a little bit about what you're what you're describing is is a story that really connected with an audience and you know i wonder if you can um just talk about how important local news is right we've had a lot of bad you know there just seems to be a continuous stream of um uh, you know just just difficulties right that local news outlets are facing all around the country and i wonder how do you feel about the role that your station is playing in the community? I think it was really neat. You know, we were committed at first to covering it and sort of we thought, oh, you know, we can help a few people. That'd be great. And then when it turned into the sort of act of public service, I think it really became something where we felt compassion for these people because we saw that this could have happened to us, too. And I think that resonates with people. There were artists, teachers, business people, contractors, regular people who one day worked and got a paycheck, the next day had nothing. And to a point where you think, oh, you know, you have a little bit in savings and stuff like that. It went like this. And these people said, I've reached out to the governor's office. I reached out to lawmakers. We were the only ones sort of getting back to them in a timely fashion saying, okay, let's try to help you. What can we do? Um, and. I think the compassion element of journalism, as you mentioned, you know, media quite often has been under the attack. Um, and I, I feel like this just shows how important just the humanity and compassion that's really needed in journalism. 